So the original logo, um, because it was a, a, a logo that turned into a logo, but the original logo, my friend Carrie, uh, Carrie Lutz, um, she was an artist in high school, in like ninth or 10th grade, 9th grade maybe, and she um, drew a logo and in the flames, there was like a little, we called them Puff, you know, Puff the Magic Dragon, there was like a little demon in the fire, you know? And so that was the original, with an upside down cross and um, you know, I, I told her what we wanted, you know, and she made the logo for us, the original logo. Now, whenever Combat took that, and when we got signed later, uh, I said, make it look more like the old English or Germanic so that we want it to be able to be red because like any brand, we want it to just kind of be stamped in your mind. Like when they see that, it'll, you know, that's our, our marquee. That's our, you know, that's my trademark. You know, they, I want that to be like something that people will notice. It's easy to read and something that really sticks out and that looks heavy and gothic kind of like, you know, like something, you know, from the medieval times or something. It's almost like a signature. He has, Jeff has that signature sound and so that signature logo just kind of goes hand in hand. I mean, definitely the Possessed logo, I think it's one of the best, like, in general, one of the best metal logos, you know. It's one of those that you can just see from afar and you know what it is. Well, you know, you think about it, back in those days, people wanted, were, wanted their logo to be red. They wanted it to stand out back in the 80s. We got a guy named Vince Stevenson who redid it again, and then Combat's artist we did it again, but it all stemmed from a girlfriend of mine in high school that made the original Puff Dragon. So it was kind of like, as we got more money and more clout behind us through the record companies, it got cleaner and cleaner until it became something which I think is like a towering kind of epic stamp, you know? And as we went along, the 90s, it got crazier and crazier and then, you know, it just evolved everything evolves you know now people don't they don't want you to know what it what it says well for me um, personally if, uh, if I have to do my homework to look at the, la the the logo and determine what you're next there's too many bands so it's kind of better for marketing you always have something that you could read off the bat the thing with the logos these days you know I, I don't understand the concept of the unreadable logos at all um, Again, you know, back in that day, every band was very um, distinct. From the first note you heard, it's like, oh, that's Possessed, or oh, that's Megadeth, or, you know, whoever. Didn't matter, you know. One note, you knew exactly who it was, and it's the same with the logo. But if you think about it, like, like the, the bands that, you know, carry the torch after Possessed, you know, like, what we call, like, you know, old school death metal nowadays, like, like Obituary and D-Side or Morbid Angel and <clears throat> Autopsy, you know, all those bands, you know, you can, the logos are still readable. <clears throat> I guess somewhere around, you know, mid-90s, uh, I think with all the uh, brutal death metal stuff and uh, gore grind getting mixed in with death metal, um, uh, slam death metal started to be a thing too, you know, you have bands like Internal Bleeding, Dying Fetus, kind of taking things to another level extreme, not only musically, but lyrically and, you know, visually, so I think that was part of it. We're so brutal that, you know, you really gotta look at our logo to understand what our, our name is. You know, it's not gonna be like, you know, Metallica, where I could, you know, you could read the logo you know, some, some people do that these days because why? They want to keep it real, they want to keep it old school. You know, I, I think that's old school is having your logo being able to be read, you know, but uh, if you look at like, you know, bands where you can't read the logo, I mean, I, I sometimes I look at it like that was kind of like in some way related to black metal because when the black metal logos came out, you couldn't read them. And I think obviously, you know, people get really carried away, carried away with that. And nowadays, it's you know, it's insane. You know, I always <clears throat> joke with, uh, with my band members from <clears throat> Possessed and my other band, and because you know, I'm 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 the youngest, <laughs> you know, both bands. So they always wearing you know bands like this, you know, like 
um, or the fit of sanity or something like that. And they're like, what the fuck does your shirt say, man? And I'm like, well, you lost your uh, death metal reading skills? It was weird. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I had my band and I made sure my, you know, you could read my logo. I was like, fuck that. I'm, you know, why the fuck are you going to make a logo where you can't read it? You know, but... To be honest, I mean, I love it. I, like, I see a ridiculous logo, I'm like, awesome. You know, I, can, I, I, I like the challenge. Like, let's see, let's see, let's see if I can decipher this. Most of the time I can. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, no, I, can, I can't even try. If you care about your music and you want to, you know, be a professional band and play shows, festivals, and bring it out to the world, your logo needs to be a little readable. You know, I don't see a band like that, you know, with an unreadable logo headlining back end, for example, you know, that's not realistic. <laughs> you know, to each their own, I guess, right? It's, it's the stamp of that band and their sound and everything that comes with it, you know. It's, you know, now all the bands sound exactly the same to me, <laughs> so, and same with their logos. I can't tell what it says. I, I countless times people say, I was just looking for something heavy and I saw that. I had no idea who you were. I saw the upside down cross and I bought the album. Yeah, I think it represents death metal overall. I mean, when people see it, they, they know what they're getting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's all interesting. I mean, and that's part of the evolution of, of the mutation of death metal. You know. Six, six on the head of the wrist, the bloody